Hi everyone and welcome to today's live Q&A video. Um, I've received some questions since my last video which I'm going to give my thoughts on today and try to answer these as best as I can. All thoughts are my own obviously. Um, if anybody has any questions you can ask me in the chat or if you're watching this video later you can ask me in the comments uh, later on in the usual way. Um, please let me know in the comments if you have any questions. So one question that I've received asks about where supplementary bonding is needed. So the places where supplementary bonding is required can be found in Chapter 7 for special locations. Um, supplementary bonding is a method of providing additional protection against electric shock. So it's something that we always used to do in rooms containing a bath or shower, as you probably remember. However, it's now possible to omit this if 30 milliamp RCD protection is provided in circuits to the bathroom. But supplementary bonding is also required in other special locations in BS 7671, such as swimming pools and other basins, agricultural and horticultural premises, um, uh, conducting locations with restricted movement, medical locations and temporary electrical installations for structures, amusement devices and booths at fairgrounds, amusement parks and circuses. So just to give you a few examples there. So I always recommend checking in Chapter 7 if you're ever working somewhere that might be classified as a special location in BS 761. Now, when it comes to rooms containing a bath or shower, I think these days, most of the time, the supplementary bonding would be omitted on a new installation because RCD protection is required in rooms containing a bath or shower. However, one example of where you might want to use supplementary bonding in a bathroom or shower room is if you carry out an EICR on an older installation that was installed to say the 16th edition. And if you find that supplementary bonding isn't present, that isn't present. Now, the reason, the reason is back in the 16th edition, not all circuits were protected by RCD. And in some of the 16th edition consumer units that you might come across, it might not be possible to obtain RCBOs or RCDs for the existing consumer units. So adding supplementary bonding might be useful if it's not possible to add RCD protection without replacing the consumer unit. You see, if you do um, any ICR on an existing installation, and if you find lack of RCD protection, now that would be a code three usually if that relates to a new requirement in BS 7671. However, if you find an installation that has lack of RCD protection in the bathroom as well as uh, lack of supplementary bonding, then that would be a code two on the ICR. So it's an important thing to bear in mind there. And so that might be an example when you're doing an ICR it might be a good idea there to, um, to add supplementary bonding in that case, if, if you can't add to RCD protection without changing the consumer unit, for example. So I hope that makes sense to everybody and I hope that answers that question. Um, let me know in the chat if you've got any questions and let me know um, in the comments if you're watching this later on as well. Um, another really interesting question I received this week asks, what code should be given for a 2.5 mil twin and earth ring main in reference method 101 on a 32 amp circuit breaker. Um, so this was a really interesting question. Now, to answer this, I would give that a code two, and I'll explain why. So, um, so if we look in BS 7671 at table 4D5, which gives us current carrying capacity for 70 degree insulated and sheathed flat cable. And if we look at the ratings for 2.5 mil cable, You'll notice that in all of the reference methods, a 2.5 mil twin earth is rated lower than 32 amps. Now, the reason we can have a 2.5 mil cable protected by a 32 amp breaker is explained in Appendix 15 and specifically in Regulation 433.1.204, which says that such circuits are deemed to meet the requirements of 433.1.1 if the current carrying capacity IZ of the cable is not less than 20 amps and if under the intended conditions of the use, the load uh, currents in any part of the circuit is unlikely to exceed long, uh, for long periods, the current carrying capacity of the cable. So if we look at 2.5 mil cable installed using reference method 101, which is above a plasterboard ceiling covered by thermal insulation exceeding 100 mil in thickness, we can see that the current carrying capacity of that cable is 17 amps. So, and that's before taking into account any correction factors that may apply for grouping, ambient temperature, and so on. So the current carrying capacity is less than 20 amps. Uh, this situation wouldn't comply, and there would be a risk of the cable being overloaded, which is why I would give that a code two. So it's important to bear in mind the current carrying capacity of the cable 
Um, and the way we calculate this is slightly different because rather than dividing the rating of the breaker um, by the correction factors, we divide 20 amps uh, by the uh, correction factors. So make sure that the IZ of the cable is greater than 20 amps. And that's that's the difference when we're doing the current current capacity um, for a ring circuit that's installed in accordance with Appendix 15, is we need to make sure that the IZ of the cable is greater than 20 amps. So um, if you're ever doing a um, uh, current carrying capacity of calculation for a ring circuit, that is a slight difference to bear in mind there. Rather than dividing the rating of the breaker by the correction factors, we divide 20. So, and that's, and that's because in a ring circuit, um, each leg of the circuit is not expected to carry more than 20 amps. So I hope, that's, uh, hope uh, that makes sense. Um, so ask, ask me any questions if you, have, if you have any in the chat, if you can think of any questions. I hope you found that useful. So if so, please give the, uh, this video a like and please let me know if you have any more questions and if there's any other topics that you'd like me to talk about at all. Um, and if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to see more videos like this. And let me know if this live format um, is uh, is interesting to you guys. Um, I hope you find it useful. Um, if, the, if there's not any more questions, then I'll leave the live stream there. Thanks for watching.